Greetings to everyone watching this session. Today I'm going to talk about how to build a robust data discovery and the data delivery platform completely in a container native and cloud native way. We will start with uh, looking at what are all the problem statements one by one and we will solve one by one of those problem statements to achieve the container native uh, cloud native way of uh, data delivery and data discovery platform. Before diving into the topic, a little bit about me. I'm Karthik, Karthik and Govind Raj. I'm a CNCF speaker. I'm a cloud native architect and the developer. I have a deep interest in cloud native developer experience as well. I'm an open source software enthusiast as well as a blogger. You can find me at Twitter and uh, I scribble sometimes about my technology challenges and uh, uh, the solutions that I eventually got to or I have found on my Medium articles. Um, so that's that's about me. Without further ado, we'll dive into the topic, data. The data discovery, data delivery, data advertisement, everything is around data. World is revolving around data. The reason is obviously data is the future uh, because data helps in making informed decisions rather than like, you know, speculating things or guessing about uh, the results and the outputs of the stuff. So uh, data allows uh, everyone to monitor the health of very important factors. For example, uh, one of the basic example maybe like is uh, utilizing the data for quality monitoring. Uh, an organization can respond to challenges even before they become full-blown crisis and allows them to be proactive rather than reactive. This data also gets you the results you want because uh, you'll not be in the guessing game anymore because you'll be using data and this data gets the results you want because the decisions that you are making would be based on the data. And this data gives you historical facts and based on the facts, you will predict the future. The data uh, allows you to provide a lot of strategic approaches because effective data collection and analysis will allow you to direct scarce resources where they are most needed. So these are the few advantages of data and this is why data is the future. And there are a lot of problems when dealing about data in a larger organization in much more uh, data oriented organization per se. Like for example, there will be a lot of hassles in finding where the data is because that is a bigger challenge. Like finding where the data is a challenge when there is no centralized uh, cataloging solution available. So we will see those briefly in a bit, but like finding the data, data silos, data advertisement, authorization of data. And these are like, these are the problems that we will be looking at uh, one by one. Uh, to start with like data silo, in a, in a larger organization, in a much bigger enterprise uh, system, enterprise companies, you will see there will be a lot of different teams working uh, independently. And each of those teams will have their own buying capacity, like buying power within them. So that uh, within that organization, when multiple teams have buying power for the data from the market independently, they will go ahead and buy the data. And of course, they'll forget to let the rest of the organization know that they bought a particular set of data. So now this results in departments buying the same data for duplicated contract, duplicated cost, duplicated effort, and etc. These data that are bought become silo within their own organization, within their own departments. So not to blame them, there is no time to share that. And uh, same data set might be needed for a different team as well. Uh, this ends up, as I said, like this ends up in uh, doing a double cost for the same data. So that's that's uh, the, that's the problem of data silo and the data advertisement and the data discovery aspect of things. So even though if the data is available, as we saw in the previous uh, case, teams will not be able to discover them because there was no uh, centralized data cataloging solution. So uh, to make the data discoverable, there should be at least a little amount of work on the advertisement of data. If the data is bought by a different team, is available within the organization, and the same data set is needed by another team, there is no possibility of knowing the availability of the data to the team B. Uh, because as I said earlier, it, there is like no effort for advertisement has happened, and not to blame on the team, because they might be having their tight deadline or target to achieve or their products. Time to market is like more crucial than doing rest of the chores. So to make the data discovery easy, since it needs the data advertisement effort, it is not easy to sell the cataloging idea to those teams who are buying the data. So uh, because it, it, it has its own effort of doing the data advertisement. And so to achieve that central uh, data cataloging solution, it is obvious that we need to solve this from the root with no to zero cost or additional effort to the teams. 
So the next part of the problem is like authorization of the data. So not all the data that we are buying from the market vendor are available to use for everyone in the organization. There are certain data contracts that allow everyone to uh, use the data in the entire organization. And there are certain contracts that does not allow specific functional team to use that particular data. So when we do some delivery on the discovery platform, by using the data advertisement part and cataloging problem, we don't want to put the team in jeopardy because they'll be in the violation of uh, the data contract that they have executed with the data vendors. So authorization of the data is another important and crucial factor to be factored in when designing the data delivery platform for an enterprise organization. And this amongst all the problems to solve, I feel this particular usage metrics is one of the most important factor or most important problem to be solved. This provides the measure of success for our data platform as well as the usage metrics for the data as well. These usage metrics are so crucial. These are the so very much needed key factor for determining the continuation of the data contracts with the data vendors or retirement of specific data contracts or even renegotiating of those data sets. Like for example, if the data vendor might have executed a contract such that only team A of that particular function function can use this data and later we come to know that the team B is also in need of the same set of data, then it's good to go back and renegotiate the contract to get the team B included into the contract rather than like uh, doing a new contract exclusively for the team B. So that will actually save a lot of duplicated cost and a ton of money for that and effort in that matter. So this usage metrics helps a lot in that aspect of things where we can actually see who's authorized to use the data and who is not and then like we will be moving forward with that. So now with those problems we saw earlier, how can we find a solution to this, which single solution for all these problems, single platform, which will serve all the needs of those particular problem statements? and most importantly in the cloud and container native way. So let's look at that initial data discovery or the cataloging problem. To make the data to be discoverable, we already uh, saw that we need to index the available data as in like there is a need for indexing the data to make sure it is discoverable. And to index them that there are data pointers we must need so that the system could actually uh, able to get that data pointers and go to that particular data location and start indexing those metadata. And the additional point to be considered is that this data might have been stored in different storage platforms or different databases like for example when I say platforms uh, it might be in a, in a SQL database or a NoSQL database or in flat files and anything like that and when it comes to databases uh, there are like multiple uh, flavors of databases and each of them uh, will actually have their own way of connecting to a client and uh, delivering the data over wire or something. Those are something needs to be considered when we are designing a data delivery platform and not just that when we decide to bring up a data solution then we need to make a boundary for each of those data contracts we can coin them as data sets uh, provided by vendors so by doing that uh, as a data set as the name we would actually result in having a hierarchical structure which is much more easier in perspective of data cataloging so you'll have a vendor and you will have the data sets and maybe you will have like a, a few data items underneath the data sets so now we can think of these uh, as a microservices architecture like every single data set is what the research or the user is, in, is interested for. So all of these are uh, as services by itself. And uh, there is a demand for each of these data sets that differs. So for example, a data set A is like uh, heavily utilized by multiple teams and data set B is utilized by only a handful number of users and it is of not much frequent uh, compared to the data set A. So something like that. And also like because of the demand uh, differs, we need to scale them independently based on the demand. So uh, with that in mind, like microservices and uh, scaling on demand, the container or the cloud native approach is the best fit for these data sets. So we can now determine like all of these data sets can be a container by itself, independent container by itself. Now with that approach, we can actually scale up and scale down on demand. Another important point to be considered is that there should be minimum to no effort to the team to onboarding the data that is like one of the most important piece because if we fail to achieve that particular solution then we will end up in like not succeeding in our data platform or not succeeding in selling this data platform to the researchers or to the, to the corresponding stakeholders in the organization 
With those in consideration, we can pretty much come to a conclusion that any data needs to be indexed, needs the following data pointers. So there'll be like uh, the source and the fields is the most important parent or top level objects that we can consider. Uh, if it is a JSON structure, there'll be like few following children respectively. Uh, for example, name, uh, this is to determine the name of the data set for identification purposes, for querying purposes and evaluating authorization against the user for this particular data set, uh, etc. And the type of the data store to determine uh, which connector we should be having in our container so that we are actually plugging in the proper connection parameters to reach to the destination data store to query the data out of it. And the location is like kind of a fine granular location details. Like for example, if it is a database, uh, it, the location would say like what table name it is. If it is a flat file, a directory structure, if it is an API, it would actually provide you what is the API address that we need to uh, query for. And the description, of course, this is like a, a human readable, a brief description about the data set. And this is uh, only for the data cataloging purposes and the module, uh, the name of the module along with the semantic version uh, for the type of the connector uh, to be plugged in. Uh, we will see that in a bit. And the authorized for is something like what we're gonna ask from the data onboarding persons, like say, who's authorized to use this data set and so on. Like this is to make sure like uh, the user or the onboarding person, uh, the team, we are not putting them in the jeopardy uh, for violating the data contract. And the fields would have like name, data type, alias, uh, is metadata field and so on. Like the name is what is the name of the field uh, that carries the data uh, and what is the data type of that particular data. If there is any alias we can we wanted to keep or uh, the last one is like is metadata field is like something which is very important because those are all the fields that uh, are tagged with is metadata equal to true. We're gonna use that for indexing in our data cataloging solution. So this is the simplest configuration we can come up with. Now with that, uh, let's see what is modules. As I have hinted in the configuration, we need to break down the query engine and the query engine uh, would have a plugin interface to provide multiple module plugin flexibilities. So these modules are aimed against uh, different storage options, different databases, different query engines and etc. So along with the module definition that uh, can have the connection parameters as well. This is another way to isolate the connection configuration from the code configuration and so on. With that, like this is how uh, a module would look like in our uh, data platform. It would have like multiple uh, higher level components like say SQL based, file system based, no SQL based, uh, or even like cloud database, provider based and API based and things uh, and so on. So each of these single representation icon will be a module now we have seen like uh, what are all the problem that we need to solve, what are all the configuration that we have at hand and how to reach those data. Let's see how to onboard this particular data set because this is the real work that takes in place to have the data cataloging solution. So we will need to have an interface for accepting the data pointers. Let's assume we will provide a UI to accept all the data set configurations. Like who's the vendor, what is the data set name, who's authorized to use it, where it is like coming from or where it is stored against and uh, how are we gonna query against and things like that. The next thing is like, there cannot be a workflow without approval because this approval process will gatekeep the system, will gatekeep a platform to be uh, the perfect uh, mode, as in like to prevent from the duplication of data as, as much as possible. There is no guarantee though, but it is a same process of having a workflow in place for approvals. And the last thing is like, we might also need to provide some custom transformation of the data set names. Uh, for example, uh, there'll be a data set A, which will be having uh, time series component and it is represented as MMM dash YYYY. And there is another data set component that will be represented as like MMYY. Now, to be in consistent mode within our organization, within our enterprise firm, we wanted to make sure there is a custom transformation component. So uh, this would avoid unnecessary surprise among the researchers. And there could be additional transformation as well, like say, users could come up with, okay, this is an additional transformation of this particular field that I wanted to do and, and so on. So with that, uh, we can define pretty much what the tech stack we wanted to use initially. For example, uh, to have a performant indexing store, which is backing up our data cataloging solution, we could use the Elasticsearch cluster, and we can make uh, those Elasticsearch clusters deployed as a containers onto a Kubernetes cluster. To do this custom transformation, we could use the serverless framework to pass from one transformation to another and hook, on, hook any more user-driven customization as needed as well. So this would give us like more, much more flexibility and also a predefined set of transformations that we wanted to uh, do across all the uh, data sets in our organization.
So now to get the data to the serverless stage, we need some process to trigger and pour those entire metadata over to it. So we will use a deployment in Kubernetes and it's container to define that metadata query. Uh, remember like we also uh, have a field name that actually says like whether those fields are metadata or not. So using that configuration, we will cook up a metadata query and we will fire that against the data store uh, where we actually have all those details in the source configuration. So that would actually give us the metadata and we can actually pour all those entire metadata onto the transformation workflows, which is a serverless framework. And uh, this would typically look something like this. There'll be user coming in and they'll be like feeding in the configuration of a data set and there goes an approval process. Once it is approved, once uh, the approval is like A and uh, this uh, that actually goes into the system. And now the deployment will actually start querying the metadata against the data store, and then it will pass on those entire metadata to the serverless workflow. So for example, in this case, uh, if you're using on-prem, you'll be using something as a deployment on the serverless workflow, like for example, Knative or something like that. So that will deploy as a pod, and that is the, that is the depiction over here. Uh, these serverless uh, functions are also deployed as a pod onto an on-prem Kubernetes cluster. And once it passes all those serverless workflow, then those data, the transformed information, uh, the transformed data is written onto an Elasticsearch cluster, which is backing up a data catalog. Now the data catalog will have the indexed data of whatever the configuration uh, of the data set that the user has been provided so far. So this is how uh, a sample workflow lo will look like. Now, that solves the problem of effortless data advertisement and data cataloging and discovery solution. We also captured what are all the teams authorized to use that particular data set uh, with that, but still the data need to reach the researchers. That's the data delivery problem that we have to solve. So a uh, data platform as of now is not fully complete, it's half complete. Let's look into that, how we can solve the data delivery problem. To solve the data delivery issue, we can iterate on the previous data cataloging solution and continue on Kubernetes clusters. One thing we have determined for each of the data sets is to isolate all of them as independent services so that we can have fine control over scaling of those data sets. So we will do the same thing for now a data and a metadata as well, because these metadata are actually queried only to index onto a data cataloging solution. And the data catalog is the only place where the user is actually looking at the data sets. Now the data engine would be the one which is responsible for delivering the actual data to the researcher. So we will isolate both of the data and the metadata engines as well for every given single data set. Now we will need to provide the client libraries or SDKs or expose the structure for the teams to build upon uh, for their desired programming languages. These SDK or the client libraries should handle the authorization aspect of that. And then it should move forward once the authorization is like uh, Proved, then it should move forward to query the container, the data container uh, to provide the data to the researcher. Um, so uh, a typical workflow of that would be something like this. Uh, the researcher, will, uh, the user will be coming on and then they'll be providing uh, configurations of those, uh, of the data sets. Now, now the high level workflow would be something similar to this. Like first the data will be provided by the onboarding user. And then secondly, the onboarding will uh, go through some approval workflow. So once this approval workflow is like approved and the services will get indexed by the metadata query engine, pushing these entire metadata of every single data sets corresponding to it uh, to the fourth step, which is serverless workflow now. So once the serverless picks up all these data metadata, now all of these metadata are transformed according to the predefined uh, rules. And if there is any custom transformation needs to happen, it will go through that as well. And then once com and upon completing the travel uh, across all the serverless functions, these uh, enhanced metadata would be written onto a data uh, onto the Elasticsearch cluster. Now this Elasticsearch cluster is, as I said earlier, is backing up the data, uh, data cataloging solution. Now, as the next step, like seventh or even a fresh start, the user will come in and then they'll go log into the data catalog with their own credentials and then they'll start searching for the data set they are, they are in need of. Now, from the data catalog, we will get the data pointers and the user will actually feed those data pointers to the client libraries or the SDK as a seventh step or as the next step eventually organically. Then 
Then the eighth step, the system will try and validate the user against the data set in another container. Uh, this That serves as the authorization resolver. Now, what that means is like either the username or the service account where the request is originating from will be taken into consideration. And then remember like we have every single data set configured with who is authorized to use uh, those particular data or who is authorized to get those particular data. So all those usernames or service account will be evaluated to see if they belong to that authorized set of users and if the username belongs to the authorized set of users, then the authorization resolver would pass on that request as a successful request uh, to the proxy resolver. Now the proxy resolver is another container which understands, uh, which maps the name of the data set to the corresponding ingress URL to the deployment uh, against any single, any given data set. So this is important because our, our client libraries will be coming up with the data pointer as like what is the name of the data set and which is not known to, an, uh, to the Kubernetes cluster. Now, this proxy resolver is the place where uh, any given data set name, like say data set A will be resolved to its corresponding deployment, data deployments URL, which is an ingress URL, and then the request will be passed on to that particular container. Once the URL is resolved, obviously the data engine will query the target data store, uh, how uh, the metadata query engine was doing earlier, and then it returns the data directly to the user via client libraries or SDKs, whatever they are using or using it. So with that, uh, we have solved the data cataloging problem, the data advertisement problem, data metrics problem, and the data delivery problem. So this provides uh, an MVP of a complete and a robust data delivery and the data discovery uh, platform. There are like a lot more things we can do on top of this because still this is a minimal viable product for us. Uh, for example, we can actually create an operator in Kubernetes for all those entire deployments. Like say, for example, given that data configuration, there should be a data uh, engine deployment. There should be a metadata engine deployment. There should be a set of predefined workflows uh, for the serverless functions. And uh, it will actually go on with uh, corresponding indexing schedules and so on. And we can also monitor the health of the data set APIs as well automatically and using the search history in the data catalog we, we could also suggest uh, certain data sets that are close to their match in the data cataloging solution as well so like this like we can do a lot of much more enhancements and so on so with that that's my session thank you for watching how to build a robust data discovery and a delivery platform completely in a cloud native way i hope you enjoyed this if you have any questions please feel free to reach out to me on twitter i'm more active in twitter and also you can follow me over there